We are. We are back on Art School Live, and our guest today is Shuang Lee, the great watercolor artist. Uh, Shuang, tell us what you're going to do today. Yeah, today we're going to talk about uh, how to paint one of the very important uh, elements in the landscape of painting, which is rocks. How can we paint something believable and lively? So how to paint believable and lively rocks, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to be right back and get started. It's Art School Live with Eric Rose. Now, here's your host, Eric Rose. Well, we are back in Austin, Texas in our studios here, and we have been... Uh, uh, traveling and away for a little bit. So thank you for tuning in today and welcome back to Art School Live. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur, Plein Air Magazine, Streamline Art, and so many other things. It's kind of like Disney for artists, right? So we try to do things to keep you entertained, engaged, and occupied. Of course, we were here every day through COVID. We're trying to be here as much as possible when we can. Uh, today, our guest is Shuang Li. And uh, it is um, an incredible opportunity for you to learn about watercolor, whether or not you're a watercolorist. Uh, she is an incredible painter, and we're going to learn more about today painting rocks and uh, creating a lively scene. And so you can see some of the things that she's done. She's absolutely incredible. Uh, we have a prize today for tuning in. And uh, if you tune in and leave comments in the comments section, you could win a prize, which is the great easel brush clip from easelbrushclip.com. And uh, it's a cool tool that you clip onto your studio or plein air easel, and that way you're not dropping your brushes. The ones you use the most are right there. I even saw one on Scott Christensen's easel the other day, so that was kind of neat. Um, anyway, you can, uh, you can win that prize by leaving comments. And if you would, uh, say where you're from. That's always nice to see. And uh, thank you again for tuning in. Uh, we have for you uh, tips on watercolor, 101 watercolor painting tips, tricks, and techniques. If you go to watercolorlive.com slash 101 tips, you can get that today. It's uh, watercolorlive.com 101 tips. Okay, so uh, what else do I have here? I think we're going to get right into Shuang Li. Uh, she's got a couple of videos out. One is called Fearless Landscapes, uh, where she teaches her landscape painting techniques and the distance and how you get those light effects. She's got another one called Fearless Waterscapes, where she's talking about waterfalls. And uh, you will have an opportunity to learn more about that throughout the day. But first, let's get right back to her. Chuang, thank you for being here today. It's uh, always a pleasure for me to be on there. We always try to, you know, I, I, I had to step out for a little while and, and so we've been doing replays and so we always save the best for when I return. And so thank you for agreeing to do this today. We're really honored. You're an amazing watercolor artist. So let's go ahead and get started with our training. All right. So rocks are important visual elements uh, in the painting. So when you see this, this is the re reference photo. Uh, there are only very easy three points. If you remember, you can paint a believable and the library rocks. First is the paint the correct shape. Uh, we all know that, okay? But what is the correct shape of a rocks? Don't paint a particular rock, but remember the rock shapes are more or less angular. It's a hard, it's not a square, it's not a rounded. If you can paint that, you can always find that kind of rock, but it's hard to make that believable. So if you want to paint something believable, make it angular, okay? And second is when you paint rocks, you want to make sure that one or two of the rock edges needs to be seen. So here is a sample. Later, I will do a demo. Okay, so this is a one that I painted recently in the plane there. One edge needs to be seen clearly. The other edge also needs to be seen. Then you can make, some, make this shape 
rock like a believable rocks. The common mistake is that none of the edges are being seen. Okay, so, I want to make sure I want to make sure I get some clarity on this because I want to remember it. Uh, make your edge or make your rocks angular so they're believable. So even if you have a flat rock, give it some angles so it's believable. And then right. what, what was that to? To make the edge be seen, meaning, can you explain that? Does that mean a sharp edge or putting color on that edge? What, what does that mean exactly? Right on. So you one or at least one edge needs to be seen as a hard edged. Okay, otherwise you cannot really express the angular angle clearly. So to be seen doesn't really mean that it has to be dark. It can be completely light, but okay. it needs to be seen. Okay, so, so the hard the edge is really the trick to that. Yeah, so here is a here is an example. Okay. Edges needs to be seen, but if you paint all the three or four or more edges around the rock everywhere to be seen, that looks funny because the rock sits either on the water, on the grass. So there must be one edge somewhere that's connected to something else. It's on the inside the water, on top of the sand or on the grass. So that edge usually needs to be softened or basically you are painting the land instead of painting the rock. So don't paint all the edges around as a solid but at least one or two edges needs to be seen. So here is a smaller rock, probably a little bit more clear, clear edge. And you can see one or two, but at the bottom one, you don't really see it because it's set in the water and then we are basically painting the water instead of painting the rock. So my brain tells me it's there, but it doesn't have to be uh, stand out. I noticed one of the tricks you used in the two examples that you showed is that there was high contrast uh, where that edge was. So you have this one edge against the white of the water, so it really stands out. The other one you had against uh, the dark of the water where it was a lighter edge. Right. So that you have to remember one or two edges needs to be seen. Then you can use those edges to show the angular direction. Okay. So then the third one is actually uh, less important. If you get the first two right, your rocks will already look believable. The third one is you have to vary them. Now you don't paint all the rocks exactly the same size in a group because no such rocks in nature that's made by mother nature. You know, it's always very. So we make something very large or larger than the others are medium and a smaller a few. So I use a word that says, you know, you make a mama, papa, baby, and, and a few cousins. <laughs> okay. Mama, papa, baby is a good already as a family. Then if you add some remote cousins to go associated with it, then, then they look like a happy family. That makes sense? Yeah, I like that. Mama, papa. I, I think, you know, rocks are so random. I, I Sometimes when I'm painting rocks, I just start making brush strokes haphazardly just because if I, if I lay them in too carefully, they're going to look like they're man-made. But if I lay things over one another, I think that will help. So are you going to do a demonstration? Yes, I'm going to do a demonstration, just show that three points that I just talked about. Okay, so while you're setting up, I'm just going to tell everybody about something. And, and so I'm going to take you off camera for just a second. You can get set up and we'll do that demonstration. All right. Okay, wonderful. All right. Well, you know, the, the idea of learning uh, and growing as an artist is so exciting. You know, you can be an artist until the day you drop, as long as you can hold a brush. And I've talked to artists throughout my career in art, and I've found out that the one thing that keeps them enthusiastic, you know, you, you hear stories from people who say, I've lost my enthusiasm, or I've lost my drive, or I've lost my interest. Uh, I, you know, I've been painting the same things over and over again. One of the best ways to pull yourself out of that is to give yourself uh, the gift of instruction. Uh, I have talked to artists 
who've been painting professionally for long, long periods of time. And yet those same artists are uh, going and taking other people's classes and learning from one another. And uh, so there's a great opportunity to learn. We have an event coming up called Watercolor Live. It's coming up in January. And uh, it is the largest art conference in the world. And yes, even watercolor wins the largest art conference in the world live online. And uh, we have some big names coming. It's January 27th through 29th. If you can't make the dates, there are replays available. But if you can watch live, uh, you get a lot of benefit from, from watching live as well. But some of the big names, uh, John Salmanin is going to be coming back to Watercolor Live. He was such a big hit last year. And then uh, Thomas W. Schaller, of course, also one of the greats. And so, so many others. And so we have a lot of different people who are going to be teaching it at uh, Watercolor Live, some of the great watercolorists and, and all kinds of subject matter, whether it's uh, animals or cityscapes or uh, portraits. Uh, we and, and everybody's got a different style. The great Alvaro Casanet is going to be highlighting. Uh, so, so many incredible artists will be there. And you want to be a part of this if you possibly can be. And you want to tell your friends and spread the word because you're going to be having a great experience. The experience that I had recently is I watched and I uh, I didn't really realize how much I had picked up until I picked up the brush and started painting uh, months afterwards. I pulled out the watercolor kit uh, this summer uh, when I was traveling. I didn't want to carry all my other stuff. And I was able to uh, implement a lot of the things that I learned just because it kind of stuck in my head. So there's a great opportunity to learn from some of the great watercolor artists of our time. And uh, also we have speeches from a couple of great people and so on. So uh, make sure you check out Watercolor Live. Uh, it is an absolutely incredible event. And uh, also uh, we'll get right back now to our, our guest, Shuang Lee, and she's going to do her demo. All right, Shuang, let's do this. All right. So you won't see me, but you will see the... Um my surface and I'm going to, okay, let me change angle a little bit. Okay. Okay, so that's better. So here is a photo. I'm not going to copy the photo. Okay, so also you, when you paint rocks, you wanted to remember the three points I just mentioned, but not just copy or paint the rocks in front of you exactly. You wanted to use the three points I mentioned uh, to do your rock because you're an artist. Okay? You know, there are people who just tuned in. So if you'll just touch on briefly the three points. Okay. So one more time, we do three things for painting believable rocks. The first thing is you wanted to paint the correct shapes. What is the correct shape? Is more or less angular. Okay. So the rocks, you can paint the rounded one, but it's better you paint the angular rocks. Um, as a correct shape. And the second is you want to make sure some of the edges, one or two of the edges of that particular rock can be seen clearly. So then, they stand out, right. Say it again, sorry. So they stand out. Yeah, so they stand out to be recognized visually as rocks, okay? Sure is don't paint all the rocks in front of you as the same size. Vary them in size. Also change their texture a little bit. So they vary and they group together as mama, papa, baby, and a few cousins as a happy family. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, let's get painting. All so right. let's get painting. it painting. So I have- yeah, By I, the way, we have uh, people tuning in from all over the world. I see a lot of people from India. I know India is a very big, watercolor community. So thank you everyone in India. Please spread the word. We'd like to have more of you joining us. And of course, joining us on Watercolor Live as well. I mean, what? yeah, Watercolor Live. All right. All right. So here is the rock. So I have nothing here. Remember, first thing is the correct shapes. And that's a paint wait, to wait, something. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Now we need to know what surface you're painting on. All right. Okay. So the surface is a paper, right? It's a, uh, this one I think is a, a cold press uh, watercolor paper. 
Um, so what I'm doing is, you can see, I'm using a brush. This is not um, important, but I like to have synthetic brush to paint the shapes that to be seen, which is the synthetic brush is a little bit harder than the natural hair. So that made it, uh, my job a little bit easier. And what I did was I just created an angle at this moment. And then Eric stopped me. So I'm going to continue, make this angular. Okay. So now you see, I just was one brush stroke. I was saying that one or two edges needs to be seen. Okay. So you can, people can recognize this is possible it rocks so i made this edge to be hard edge you can change the size it doesn't have to be that but it's still angular and this edge has some rough texture and then i skip a portion of it it's by accident but looks perfectly like uh, you know the the light is coming from this direction so it's already somewhat look like a rock shape so i'm just using a you know a cooler color uh, so when we said that we wanted to paint what the correct shape, which is angular, and the second point is to have the edge to be seen. The third point is to make the rocks group together as a mama, papa, baby, and the cousin as a happy family, which meant I needed to do what? I needed to add more rocks to connect them. So that's to say that's a papa rocks okay same thing and i'm changing the angle vary this one so let's make this one maybe a, a mama uh rock i'm changing the color make some red put into that little bit of dull color so do we have red rocks wow possible and again well, if you go to Colorado, you'll find red rocks. Yeah, exactly. And even you don't go to Colorado, when the sun hits the rocks, portion of the rock will become warmer light. So that's how you address that with warm color, like a red. Okay, I can add a little bit in there to make it connect. So I now made a second one. Then I need some baby ones. Uh, where should be the baby one go? So you can put it in the front. Same concept. Or you can put it in the distance, which we're jumping from, um, from a baby to cousins. You see, I'm making them into a group and vary the shape, vary the size, and vary the texture but I'm still grouping them together. Still the same concept. It's an angular, but it towards, so this one points to here, this one points to this way, and this one stands uh, flat, and the baby ones now is diminishing because it's a little too wet. But you notice I didn't really paint the bottom. Okay, so that's yeah. the edge that needs to be doesn't have to be seen, it can be seen, but it doesn't really have to be seen, okay? Then I can think about where I want these rocks to be. I wanted those rocks to be on the grass or I can make these rocks. Now it's the time to add the texture and make this variation that's even more interesting. So that's how we do that. So I'm painting almost upside down. Can you see this as a rocks? So the angular shape, I'm grouping one or two together. The most common mistake I see people do is to paint too much inside of the rock. You add a lot of textures, but without looking at the outside edges, all these connected edges to be, rec to, to be angular and to be seen. So that's outside. All these are way more important than you do something inside. When you have the correct shape, then you can do something inside to make it a much more uh, interesting texture 
and the vary the colors. So now you see I add a little darker, cooler darks next to the mama rock. That's one part. So that mama rock is stand out a little bit, but not a jumping out of the picture. So then, um, so where do we want this rock to be? We can put it in onto um, a beach or we can do it um, on the grass. That doesn't really matter. Maybe we do this uh, on the grass or something. So I think I think we should put the grass and the water. That's a real challenge for you. Uh, grass and the water. Actually, so you got no. grass to the okay. right. You got grass yeah, to the so, right. Water to the back or the left. So I'm going to do something crazy. It's not that. Well, maybe I should turn this way, huh? So you see how easy it is. Don't be so scared, man, that, you know, with uh, whatever you do, it's easy to change it. And you're not, you're not going to damage your painting. Or even sometimes we damage one, so what? It's just the learning process, right? That's one of the great things I got out of watching your videos is that you really you really talk about the the importance of courage and just going for it. and you know, and, and not being so, not everything being so precious. Yeah, the you know, I I went through that stage as well. But you know, it, afterwards I realized the more you loosen up yourself, the better. Actually, you are making a uh, much more intuitive painting instead of you know try to be correct everywhere. Um, there's not a much we can say in art is correct. It's how you. Make them believable and look like a crack. It's not really something correct. Okay, so now it's Eric's challenge. Grass on one side and the ocean or water on the left side. Right. Now here's what you got. I'm gonna I'm gonna even enhance the challenge because uh, okay. I know I, I just want to show how good you are. So now you've got a beach in between, and some of that water is gonna wash up onto that beach. Oh. <laughs> okay, so wash it off onto the beach. Actually, um, well, I can't ruin this, but I can do this is say when the water is on the beach, under the rock, what does that create? It creates a reflection, ah. right? So maybe we just do that and see how this happens. So this is the end. So back to rocks. Angular shape, mama, papa, baby, group of them together as a happy family. Then we can think about the additional. I'm using wrong colors. Okay. So uh, when we are doing a little enhancement here for the baby rock, I wanted to mention one thing. Please don't use just brown to paint your rocks. Okay, I haven't used any brown here. Okay. Um, because rocks can be any color. Study, you know, the um, the impressionist artist's painting, and you will know that they use all sorts kind of uh, colors. So I'm just putting some water there. Uh, gave me some uh, foundation to put refraction there. Don't know whether it works because it's Eric's challenge. If I fail, that's Eric's fault. It's always my okay. fault. Right. Okay, so reflection is something upside down in there, but you don't really have to be particular. And leave some white. And put in some color. See, where would you be if I didn't challenge you, Schwan? <laughs> More challenge to come? Oops. Yeah, I'm we're going to have away. another challenge coming, but I, I'll, I'll save it. Okay. So that's where uh, when I said, you know, two of the edges, and then when we are here, we are actually painting the um, 
painting the water instead of painting the rock. So you have to remember that. So this part, I basically, I try to make it very vague and not make a statement. Okay, so then do that. Smear a little bit. Why not? This is watercolor, right? And uh, people say, oh, you can use uh, credit cards. You can use whatsoever, masking fluid. Well, I don't use any of those. Okay, I use my hand because I think it's old fashioned and maybe it's out of fashion, but for artists, we got to trust our hand. We got to training our hand. That's why you go to like art school life or watercolor life, you know, to learn how to use your your hand from the masters. So okay. do you always just use that one brush? Uh, <laughs> most of the time, I I use one or two brushes. Um, this is the brush that has a tip. So the tip. And the side way um, gave me enough to handle most of my uh, brushes work. So yeah. why I wanted to switch to different brush. Okay, so what's the other challenge? Oh, well, I, well somebody in the comments <laughs> said, okay, we want to see a little beach. We want to see a little sand and see the water coming up on the sand. Oh, okay. So... Each and um, when you do the watercolor, you could do it in a way that um, is much more forgiven. Is you mix your color right onto the paper, okay? So that will help you to get a vibrant colors. Don't make it, don't mix dead colors just in your palette. So that's your sandy beach. Okay, I, I want to mention to people who are watching this because there's one of the comments that somebody just made, Dennis Marshall made, you know, you can apply the same concept to any medium, whether it's watercolor, acrylic, uh, exactly. gouache, oil, you know, the, the principles still apply. Exactly. So um, I used to paint oil a long time ago, and then I painted aquatic, and then I painted a lot of a wash. It, it's exactly the same thing. It, so it doesn't matter. Well, each medium has its, its own um, character, especially watercolor has some, you know, it's very tempted. Um, it sometimes makes me mad. Um, but the design concept or even the painting concept is exactly the same. Okay. Somebody wants so, to know the name of your brush and your paper. Oh my God. So the brush is this one is a Princeton, Princeton Aqua Elite. I don't know whether you can see it. And uh, this is a long round. I used to use a different brush, but they cancel it and nobody makes it. Um, these are very uh, economical um, um, brush, and it just uh, works for me, okay? And so uh, I put it, this one, I probably shouldn't have this one there, huh? But I see that Pierre from Sennelier is watching. Maybe he'll make the brush that you, they, who, somebody <laughs> stopped making. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know. The, 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 the brush, you, don't really need to make a, you know, a, to get a very expensive brush uh, to make a good painting. The key is you need to get the brush that fits your needs, fits your hand, fits your, the way that you handle your brush work. Okay, so I'm going to, so this is mama, papa, baby, and the baby is too small to be seen um, there. So I'll just make a little bit. And here I'll make a, a few cousin. Right now, just the black dots. Changing the color, changing the texture, and let's say this side is this side taller. So I'm going to make this one this side a little taller. So that uh, will will do the job to balance out. Basically, I'm just I'm painting almost upside down, so it's harder for me to see. But I'm guessing um, needs to have something balanced out. Okay. 
you see the same three concepts repeat. Paint the correct shape. The characteristic shape of rocks are angular. You can paint the round ones, and then we can make this cousin one look like a round. But if you paint a whole group of round rocks, they, it's harder to make them uh, look believable. And then when you make the angular shape, you want to make a one or two side of the edges needs to be seen, to be seen. So here to be seen, here to be seen, okay? And this to be seen part is was the added ocean behind it to make it as a lighter. And the third is a changing or vary the shape. So we have a mama, papa, baby concept. We'll make another one, this one here. Um, then uh, group them together. So they have a larger groups and then they have, you know, the cousin groups and then on the other side that echoes the same thing. And then we can have a bird. I probably should have got too bad. Shouldn't put this in there. Okay. And then you can think about, you know, the grass, whatsoever, um, um, over there. Now I run out of a challenge, Eric. Okay, well, let's put a blimp in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not going to show I'm going to do that. Okay. So uh, when you do the rocks, the inside, like I said, a lot of times the mistake is you put too much attention into the inside of the rocks. You stare at your rocks so carefully and then you see every uh, rough texture or whatever changes and then you say okay i'm going to use a credit card i'm going to use this i'm going to use that well you can still use it but a unity it's always the most important part instead of making every single uh, uh wrinkles of your mama rock or pop-up rock work so if you really want to create a texture, you see, I created a rough texture here. Can you see it? Yeah. Yep. And here is a soft texture. Here is almost a nothing. So we created these textures when you go, I use a wet into wet and here's a dry brush and here's something else. So you use these combinations to make the variation of your rocks or of your painting subject. All these are the exactly the same when you paint rocks and paint trees and paint uh, water, everything is the same. But changing the texture, changing the size, and the vary the direction. You see, this larger ones go this way, the small ones go that way, and make something balanced and unified, and then you get a uh, painting. So that's how we do it. Easy, right? Easy, just easy. Yeah. Easy peasy. Easy. Well, easy. you know, I, I my temptation would be to, you know, I I tend to want to fill in every space and I love the fact that under the horizon line you left that big white space uh you know where no down there down below right in there. I, I that's just I love no below the rocks. The big white space. I like that. It, it just reads like water to me. Yeah, the painting uh, doesn't have to be uh, filled exactly, you know, from artistic view. So this white currently is a balance out with the top white. Well, of course, I can give light wash and then, you know, add all junks in there. Um, but sometimes you really, really don't need to be. And uh, even in oil painting or other paintings, it's the same. Um, like uh, the great artist, uh, Richard Schmidt had a story about, he used to use a palette knife to get the, fir the first one third of his painting. Basically nothing, just uh, some texture. Um, but uh, one client once said, oh, I love your painting. I want, your, I want to buy this painting, but I want you to finish it. What do you oh, mean, no. finish it? <laughs> so, finish it, it doesn't mean you paint it to every corner. Okay, so that's uh, our artistic creativity uh, okay. should give us a sense on where you should be adding, where you shouldn't. 
So I would just leave as is. Um, none, uh, anything now. So I got the, uh, the other question is, how do you know it's finished? Do we get that question a lot? Yeah. So I have this tendency when I start looking for where I can add things. I think that's, that's already, you know, the trouble sign says it's time to finish. So give yourself an alarm says if you start looking, oh, not too bad, but can I add something here? Can I add something there? That might be just the time to stop. Somebody asked if you ever use a spray bottle. Uh, I do use it. A spray, bo spray bottle to, you can get a run off texture like here. Okay. Um, but you have to prepare that uh, you're going to lose control at some point. So be prepared for that. Um, one more time, um, your spray bottle, your masking fluid, your uh, like a masking tape or your uh, credit card uh, strip, should help you to reach the concept of getting a unity of a painting instead of uh, uh, focusing on that. Uh, one time I was teaching a workshop and everybody was like, a, for some reason from their previous workshop, they, everybody was practicing scratching every single surface using credit card. Like, but I think that's no point, okay? You want to focus on the character of the subject matter you're painting. What's the character? And you want to find the correct shape and how you're going to paint the correct shape. Spray bottle is not going to help me create hard edges. It's going to soften it. So it's useful when I needed to soften something. Okay. One thing I think that to, to the point that you made is that I think it's very important to get away from your painting as much as possible because you know sometimes we just tell ourselves we need to keep going and if you step away get some perspective on it all of a sudden you'll realize hey it's just fine it's done yeah so i'm just doing that you know i would just say oh let's paint a little bit more and uh, um, a lot of times it become a, like a hobby right afterwards okay it's so fun and i just uh, keep adding the details and then until you ruin the whole thing yeah. So, okay, uh, this is the brush that they no longer uh, make. So I'm using this one smaller. Uh, I think I taught it last time uh, on our uh, session. You can, you, you can use a, a different brush to lift out the highlight part. So this is the brush that I use, uh, very cheap. You can have like... 10 bucks for 10 brushes at Michael's. Very, very stiff, very cheap brush. So I use this to lift. Let's say I need some highlights here. It's already highlight, but I want a little bit of lighter so it's echo with this highlight. So I wetted that little bit of first. Don't use too much water just to make it wet enough. Now you can lift out things. Here's a tissue. Even use your tissue as a brush. You use a um, strong, just like you use a brush, strong, sure mark to use your tissue paper. Don't do this, okay? We are not a map, mapping floor or clean your... Um, kitchen counter, we are painting. Okay. Awesome. Am I making, making trouble to myself? No. Okay. So what we achieved is recognizing the correct shape of rocks, which is angular. So I made two, three angular shapes. I'll make this baby one a little bit clear so you can see it. And you don't need it too many rocks. In reality, if you see it, this is the reference photo. Uh, here's even more, okay? So you have uh, lots of rocks here. 
But if you pick just a few, like what I said, a mama, papa, baby, plus a few cousins, you are going to create a happy rock family. You don't need a lot more. You don't need to copy from your photo or copy from the real scene to make this happen. And then the second thing we talk about is you want to make the edges to be seen, okay? But what about the edges don't want it to be seen? You see, edges don't want to be seen into here, here, and here, because these are the bottom part of the rocks. It's something else. It's the land, it's the water that's sitting in. So that's where, and this one on the edge, and then it's behind the grass. So we basically hide them. If you paint all the edges around the rock, your rock will, will look funny, will look stiff, not lively. So we want to paint something lively. The other thing is that sharp edges draw the eye. So you don't want to draw the eye to an area that's not important to you. Exactly. You want to use the sharp, hard edges to show where people can recognize these as rocks. So then the third thing I think is uh, one is by training, two is you need to observe a lot from the nature is, you know, nature, mother nature created things was sort of random, but the beauty is there is larger, small, and a different texture, different directions and such. So we do the same we follow that concept and when you have a group of things you want to treat each rock slightly different within the unity. So that's the hardest part is you want this unified. Unified is the number one concept, and you know, as me, you know, uh, for a painting is you need everything to be unified. That's the first. Then within the unity, you want to treat them each of them slightly different from each other. That's called a variety. So that variety make your rock or any subject matter lively. If you paint everything, that's a Home Depot rocks, right? It's the Home Depot man-made rocks instead of the Mother Nature <laughs> uh, rocks. <laughs> um, so if you follow these three concepts, that's how you make uh, your painting believable and lively. And I would say in landscape of painting, because we have so many different elements, let's say today we talk about the rocks and then, you know, uh, next thing we could talk about trees and the mountains and the water. Each of them have different characters. I found that, you know, the thing is people don't really think about the characters. They just go paint. But if you think about the characters and remember that character of that element, your life will be a lot easier. Okay, so then, you know, the trees are definitely different from the rocks. But uh, if you paint the rock the tree way, your rock wouldn't be believable and vice versa. So we wanted to uh, think about this concept now because I'm talking. Bad part comes up, say, eh, I can do the little bit more. So here is the edge to be seen. Within this, I have this temptation to lift out a little bit and just to make this much more interesting. And without, so the edge is still being seen, still angular, but just to lift out a little bit. Keep the unity, and I'll make this rock. If you get it so close, look at that. And later, on, I will post on Facebook. You can see the texture is slightly different. It's not like a one piece dead of a pigment stick there. So that's how you do the fine toning. Instead of keep adding, keep adding, keep adding. Sometimes the uh, the less is more. We all know that, and sometimes. Take something off from your painting is also painting. 
Outstanding. Well, you've taught us about what not to do and what to do, and and uh, even taught us about Home Depot rocks, which is interesting. <laughs> nothing drives me. I'm nothing against Home Depot, but I just when I see these fake rocks, it's just they stand out like they stick out like a sore thumb. Yeah, you All can right. tell. Well, that is fabulous. Thank you so much. Thank you. Are you going to come on camera helpful. again so we can see you again? Yeah. Okay. So let me move my stuff. All right. Our guest today is Shuang Li and uh, uh, fabulous demo on rocks. If you didn't see it from the beginning and learn about the hierarchy and the three points, you want to make sure you do that. Okay. Shuang, you're where? San Diego? Yes, I'm in Southern California, San Diego. Nice, 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 nice. So I want to ask you two questions. Uh, the first question is, uh, you've got two videos out. Uh, one is called, uh, let's see here, it's Fearless Waterscapes. Uh, you've got three of them, really. Fearless Waterscapes, nope, two. Two or three, and Fearless Landscapes, Painting Fearlessly. Uh, two. Two of them. What, uh, what's the difference between the two, and what am I going to learn in the one that I might not pick up in the other? And, and uh, touch base on that real quickly. Yeah, so if you wanted to learn how to paint uh, landscape in general, I would say go for that fearless landscape um, videotape because it talks about all the elements that a landscape requires, like the trees and the rocks and the mountains and how you create an area perspective and uh, so on and so forth. So that, that's a general coverage uh, of all the landscape of painting. If you can go through that a few times and uh, practice a few and, you know, with your own, then I think you, you, you will be able to grasp the concept of painting a good landscape. Then if you're particularly interested in water, I paint a lot of water, you know, waterscape. Um, these days, I paint a lot of uh, ocean. But you know, you know, if you live n not a far, not close to ocean, you could have you know uh, running creeks and uh, uh, waterfalls and such. Those will be the second in this videotape is a waterscape. Water is something that's uh, harder to paint compared to rocks because it doesn't really have its own shape. It goes you know, whatever the other shapes contains, contains the water. So this, uh, this video particularly talk about the different types of water, the still one, the moving ones, and, uh, you know, how you use the water elements in your landscape and uh, paint the beautiful water. So that's the difference between the two. Okay, great. That's very helpful. So, also, uh, you're not on the faculty of Watercolor Live this January, but you were last year. Tell me yeah. what your experience was and, and uh, the kind of feedback that you got. Oh, my God. I, I don't know how many people watched the, uh, the basic course, uh, you know, I taught. You know, it, the basic courses were small segments, but people seems, uh, you know, were so encouraged by those small segments and then uh, they start picking up their brush and uh, you know start uh, doing the watercolor painting right after i still you know have people sign up on my newsletter or ask me questions through uh, my website about the things that i taught uh, in the watercolor life which yeah, is so a for great people who course. Don't understand that Shuang, that we have a basics day or a beginner's day for people who you know, are starting from scratch and you taught on that beginner's day, I believe. Right. And then uh, that's one day. And then we have three additional days, which is the actual watercolor live event. So people have the option of attending just the basics day or all four days. And what ends up happening is everybody wants to see all these great instructors. And so they, most of them just sign up for all four days anyway. Well, we yeah, had, well, uh, we, you, you should be proud. You know, we had, um, Watercolor Live was the largest virtual conference in the world, uh, largest uh, ra uh, largest art conference in the world, and the largest one that we've done. And it looks like we, we're we anticipating several thousand people attending this year in January. The lineup is spectacular, and I think you're going to enjoy it. Uh, Schwang, thank you so much for being a part of this today and for being part of uh, Streamline and Creative Catalyst. We will post where your videos are available. 
on creativecatalyst.com uh, or on streamline.art. And uh, Christina is working the, the comments today and we'll post those in there. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, I Thank love you. it. I love it. I learned so much. I just want to paint like you. I wish I could. I just need to study you more. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So, uh, all right. So our guest today was Shuang Li. And I uh, just want to uh, touch base with you guys for a couple of things real quickly. I have not been able to do live for a while. I had uh, I was doing live from uh, my lake place this summer. And then uh, I had Fall Color Week, which is my artist retreat. And that was a full week. And uh, and then I, I decided I was supposed to be in Russia because I was taking a group of people to Russia for a painting trip for uh, 10 days. And uh, that was scheduled, but of course got canceled because of COVID at the last minute. They're having a lot of issues in Russia, so I'm glad we canceled. And I had blocked out the time to take the time off from work. So I decided because I'd had such a hectic year with my dad's death and my uncle's death and my aunt's death and my cousin's death and just all the things that were going on and trying to deal with all of that, I just decided to take a couple of weeks off. And so forgive me for taking a break, but I feel really rested and really ready. And then I had four or five days where I had to drive back. So I've been gone for a while. So thank you for tuning in today. We're going to try to get back live on a consistent basis. Uh, the next couple of weeks, because of some commitments, uh, I'm going to be live Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. And we'll still put other product in in the days that I'm not live. And then we'll probably get back to normal. But uh, I want to thank you for that. Uh, we have also just want to tell you about the thing that we're really excited about at the moment. I told you about Watercolor Live. And if you're a watercolorist, that's where you need to be. But we also have one called Realism Live coming up in November. And Realism Live is, uh, is of course, realism is anything you can tell what it is, right? So uh, there's a lot of styles of realist. If you uh, might want something that's very tight and academic like you would learn at Jacob Collins School. By the way, Jacob is on Realism Live. Or you might want something looser and freer, more impressionistic. We're teaching it all and we're teaching all subjects. And so we have the figure, the portrait, the still life, uh, the landscape, plein air landscape, and, and uh, some architecture and a little bit of everything. Of course, drawing and, and basics. And uh, we've got a little bit of that that's coming up uh, in November. And again, if you can't hit the dates, you can at least uh, uh, watch the replays. So let me just play this real brief uh, piece for you. Join the world for Realism Live, the ultimate realism learning event, November 10th through the 13th. Four days of online art lessons from top realism masters from around the globe. Learn to paint nature, people, cityscapes, flowers, and more. Become a better artist. Click the link to learn more and get our free ebook. Go to realismlive.com for that free ebook. Uh, it's terrific. Also, we have a huge lineup of, of faculty members, some of the best in the world, uh, including, and, and I, I guess if I start mentioning names, I'll make somebody mad, but you can go to realism live and, and, and see it. But, uh, uh, including Jacob Collins, Graydon Parrish, Kwong Ho, uh, and, and so many more. It's going to be absolutely spectacular. Morgan Weisling uh, and uh, Mary White, the great watercolor portraitist. Uh, we've got watercolor, pastel, oil in it. we got a little bit of everything. But remember, we learn from uh, all the different things that we watch and we observe. So that's coming up, and uh, you need to get signed up. It's it's going to be spectacular. I offer a hundred percent guarantee. So if, if you sign up and after the first day, you don't feel like the, the first day was worth the entire amount of money you pay for the event, I'll refund your money. And I think that's only happened one time. And it was one person who thought it was a conference on modern art. And so they asked for a refund. And of course we would refund it because we want them to be happy. Uh, uh, people tuning in from all over the world. Thank you. I want to thank the the people who came to Fall Color Week, the Dreamliners, many of you are members of Dreamliners. If you don't want, know what that is, somebody will go in the comments and explain that. Uh, uh, but it's essentially a group of people that has formed because of this daily that we did during COVID every day. 
And uh, so we had a whole bunch of Dreamliners. I should have thought to put the group picture in my computer so I could show it to you. But uh, you go to my Facebook page, I've got the group picture in there. It's Eric Rhodes. Or go to my Instagram at Eric Rhodes. And I would appreciate follows in both places, of course. And anyway, we, we got a group picture of everybody attended, which was about, I think we had about 80 people. And then uh, we had the Dreamliners, which was probably about 20 people. And so thank you for the Dreamliners for attending. Uh, we're working on something really special for you guys. And so I'll, I'll not let you in on that until we actually have the details together. Uh, we have a lot of things that, that are in the works. And uh, if you're not signed up on our email list, uh, just go ahead and request one of our free eBooks. You can go to realismlive.com or you can go get the, the eBook that I talked about at the top of the show. I'm trying to find it here, uh, but it is essentially a place where you can kind of get, oh, here we go, 101 watercolor painting tips. And, and if you get that, then you'll get brought into getting uh, some of the things that we do. And we send uh, quite a few emails, but it's kind of like if you got an email about every new thing that came out, uh, you'd be blown away by some of the things that we're offering and some of the things we're coming up with. And so, you know, if if you don't like it, just delete it, but uh, keep keep opening just real quickly because sometimes you'll go, oh, that's for me, I gotta have that. Anyway, uh, thanks again for tuning in to Art School Live. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur, Plan Air Magazine and head of Streamline Art. And I am honored that you would be here. And thank you. Uh, we're uh, we're kind of getting things back in order here. Got the studio set up today. And uh, we'll kind of refine things as we go. And we hope that you'll continue to join us and come back. Love to uh, see your comments in the comments section. Remember, we're giving away an easel brush clip from the comments today. So we'll randomly grab somebody. Yeah, whether you're outside of the U.S. or not, we we uh, we will mail it to you. And uh, we have people watching from all over the world. Uh, today I saw India, Bulgaria, um, uh, Norway, Italy, a lot of people from a lot, a lot of different places. And I'm honored that you would take the time. Thank you for being here today. Uh, and we will see you uh, every day at 12 noon Eastern time, whether we're live or whether we're in replay, we'll be live whenever we possibly can. Thanks again. Bye-bye. <laughs>